Hi there, this is Katie Groves, and I'm going to make a difficult and painful video in which I share some things that I need to get out into the world. This is going to be um, extremely graphic and for my healing. If, um, if you cannot handle hearing about graphic descriptions of child sexual abuse and snuff images, then I do not recommend watching this video. You can look into the description for a trigger warning that I will make before posting this. I've been doing some reading about the snuff industry and cases of people who have been tried in courts of law for producing child snuff films and thinking about the unfathomable size of the snuff and child sexual abuse film industry. As a survivor of both, as neither are really separate actually, I'll just say as a survivor of child trafficking, um, that includes those things. I feel such devastation and horror. Um, I'm afraid to leave my house most days. I do it and I have a partner who's supportive, um, who helps me do it in small quantities. But I remember going through a period of time when I was 18, when I was terrified to be in public because I was terrified somebody would recognize me from those films. This was shortly after I woke up to having been monarch programmed and was discovering that I had been trafficked. And the thing that catalyzed this terror of being recognized was finding a child sexual abuse image of myself at the age of maybe 11 or 12, I think 11. And um, in the image, I was wearing a red as in ginger wig, sitting on the face of a Latina girl who I figure had been trafficked from Central America, who was wearing blue eyeshadow and had her hair tied up in a high ponytail. She was very skinny. I had a, I was thin too, but no one near as thin as her because I was a child of traffickers and was slightly better fed. I was the centerpiece of the image and um, on the website that I found it on, it had over a million hits. It was on the most viewed or most favorited, I think it was the most favorited section, but probably the most viewed as well. And yes, I was, I was 18 at the time, and I did not find that picture because I was willingly looking at child sexual abuse images. I want to be clear about that, but I was still living as a trafficked slave to a handler becoming conscious of my abuse and deprogramming myself, but I was still, um, I guess if I was 18, actually I may have been about 18 because I left there, that place, on my 18th birthday. Um, so I must have been either about to turn 18 or I was not living there at that point, but I was still being used by this man. And after I found that image, I was terrified to go outside. I didn't even become consciously aware in my front personalities that I was the child in the image. Um, I just shut down. I shut down without knowing why. Um, and I shut down, I was dissociated from the awareness that the people in the photograph were even children. Like I knew that somehow, but I was still too programmed to think critically about it. So I just kind of blocked the whole thing out of my mind. 
One day, however, after a um, recovery meeting for survivors of child abuse, I was sitting at um, the donut shop across the street eating a sandwich, and all of a sudden the image came into my head, the photograph crystal clear in my eidetic memory, and um, I was deeply and profoundly aware that the child was me in the image. And I integrated with the parts, and I think I started sobbing, and I was near my house at that time, the place I was staying, so I I left and went home, I think. I don't remember, but uh, it took me several months. It took me about eight months, I think, to integrate enough to become conscious that I had seen um, a child sexual abuse image of myself and this other girl. And later more memories came back of that image being a screenshot in a snuff film in which I had been forced to rip out the girl's eyes and snap her neck after being used to sexually assault her. I was able to force those words out just now with some dissociation, but now I'm feeling the pain and I'm horrified at having spoken of it. Right now I feel like I'm kind of looking at myself through a fog, through a window or something. I suppose that's just the only way that I know how to do this. But even if I do so dissociatively, forcing the words out does help me. It does help me heal. And hopefully it helps others too. And I'm sorry for the sound of the train. I think at the point that I became aware that um, I was a child in that image, I had already received two photo albums and another envelope containing photographs from my mother, who I had asked for images um, of, of my childhood. And the parts of me that asked for this had no idea that any of the images would be illegal. They simply asked for family photos. It was suggested to us by a sponsor in this recovery group for survivors of child abuse as part of my healing in order to help me connect with my inner child. And it did, but not in the way that I expected. And I think by this time I'd already received those photographs, but I hadn't yet been able to actually see what was in them. I had only been able to see the parts that were legal. I'd seen things that looked disturbing, body language, facial expressions. Um, certainly I had seen pictures of me at the age of six at my birthday party dressed like Josie from Josie and the Pussycats sitting on my dad's lap with his hands on me in ways that really shouldn't have been and body language from both of us that were extremely indicative that sexual abuse was going on. And that helped me a lot with the guidance of that sponsor from the recovery group. I was able to start to come to terms with what I had already known about my father, which is that he had been sexually abusing me for an extremely long time. But I wasn't able to see the things that were actually, actually illegal. While those pictures were horribly creepy and indicative, impl you know, implied sexual abuse, um, they were illegal. But what was in the illegal photographs, and this is hard for me to talk about, I've mentioned this on my channel, but I've never talked about what was in them. There were two that I knew of, and I've reason to believe there were more, but dissociative parts of me still won't show me the images. There was a third that I'm pretty convinced had something graphic in it, but my mind was blurring it out. Like I was actually seeing that I had blurred out a part of the image that was red. There was this red mass on the ground, and... In this photograph, I'll start with this one. I was maybe nine years old, I think, nine. And I was standing in this hot pink um, sweater with all this fur on it that something about it freaked me out. It was very frightening to me. And um, I had on bright white tights and a mini skirt. And my hair was kind of covering one of my eyes, I think. 
but my other eye was bulging. I looked like I was on meth, I looked terrified, and in the pose my hands were on my hips and I was kind of looking into the camera in this way. Um, the whole body language was obviously I was posing for a sexual picture. My clothes may have been on, but I was posing for a sexual picture and I had been intentionally dressed up. You could see the Christmas tree behind me and the look in my face. I mean, it just screamed child slave, child trafficked. It was horrifying. I mean, I really can't begin to explain the level of exploitation that I was obviously experiencing during that time just by looking at my face. The brokenness. The, oh God, it is, makes me want to vomit. Just thinking about a child experiencing that, not even connecting it to myself, just thinking that a child um, could experience that. When I describe it, it feels like I'm talking about someone else. Um, and it makes me sick. But there was this thing on the ground that I always told myself was wrapping paper from a Christmas present. But I don't think it was Christmas time. And like I said, it was this red mass, and I, I don't know what it was. But I showed the photograph to someone, um, a sponsor of mine in another recovery group, actually, who had been through some similar things. Um, and uh, she looked at the picture and... Um, I think she knew that I couldn't see what was in the picture, what, what the red thing was. And so she asked me what I saw in the picture, and I just described what I saw in myself. I told her I saw a child prostitute standing on the street corner. Of course, I was in my parents' living room, but that's what I saw. You know, that's what it looked like to me, the way I was posed. It looked like I should be out on the corner. Or, you know, that was, you know what I mean. Well, it should have been, but it, it's what it looked like to me. And she didn't say anything about the rest of the picture, to my knowledge. I think she understood. She knew that I had DID, and she was familiar with that. Um, that was horrifying in itself. I still don't know all of what was in it, and I feel so sick right now talking about this. But it's important for me to get this out, and actually, I'm dehydrating, so I'm going to drink some water. I don't edit my videos, so this will just be, this will just be in this, I guess. Um, but after some time, I think it was over a year, I was able to see what was in the other two pictures. In one of them, I'll save the worst for last. In one of them, I was three years old. I believe. Should have been three. I might have said so on the back. My mom put sticky notes in some of the pictures saying how old I was or putting little notes about them. Other notes. In this picture, I'm standing in the living room of the house we had lived in previously up until the age of four or five. And um, there was a row of stuffed animals behind me that... Um, I understand, I know to have been um, representative alt of altars of mine that were being created in the torture-based mind control. There was one in particular, an Elmo doll, that appears in the other picture that I recall being um, illegal. And um, Elmo was my protector, altar, my primary protector for that system that I was in. He kind of tied systems together. Um, there was this row of stuffed animals behind me, and um, I know that my father was there taking the picture. I remember that because of the way that I was looking at him. I can kind of remember it in my body, and I know that the face, the look on my face, um, was pride. That I, my, I was being praised by my father. My father was probably telling me what a good job I was doing and that I was approved of. And so I had this smile. I was dissociated, and I had this smile of pride. The incriminating thing was that well, I had on this kind of jumper thing. It was kind of shorts that extended into a t-shirt, like one piece. I think that's what it was, if I recall correctly. Maybe it was a dress, but it was bunched up between my legs because between my legs was clearly a phallic object that had been inserted inside of me. And my little skirt thing had um, formed around my genitals in a way that made it extremely obvious that something was splitting me open and 
there was wet stains around it, which I assumed to have been from lubricant. And my legs were bent in this weird way. I was holding the object in with my thighs very um, tightly. That was horrible. It's nothing like seeing child pornography of yourself. Especially when it's in your parents' home or when it's on the internet and it has over a million hits. I read some of the comments on the one online. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody if they find themselves in that position. So what was the final picture? This was the one I took to the police. I was too dissociated to even think to take the child sexual abuse image to the police. The one with the thing between my legs. I was still in denial about it, I think, at the time. Wasn't sure if it really was a child sexual abuse image. If there really was something inside of me. I now know I can look back on it with my eidetic memory. There was something inside of me. It was extremely obvious. There were stains. It was overwhelmingly clear. But I digress. The image I took to the police was... um of me also at three years old, lying in a chair that my parents called the punishment chair. And next to me was the severed head of an Asian girl, I would guess to have been Cambodian, East Asian certainly. It was blue and bloated. The image was pretty dark. There was a swash of blue liquid behind her. Grainy, hard to define. And um, she had a severed hand sewn over her mouth and a severed foot sewn to her neck, the, the, the neck hole. And I had stuffed animals in front of me in the chair, lined up. Elmo was directly in front. As I said, Elmo was my protector, alter. I was to internalize the stuffed animals in the torture-based mind control, and they were to make up the dissociative system created for me by my programmers, being my father and my mother and others. I've said before, those images are how I know this stuff happened to me. The memories are overwhelmingly clear, and I've spoken to people from my childhood before who haven't said anything I could print out and necessarily take into a court of law as proof of what I went through, but who said plenty. Plenty to confirm what I went through, what we went through. I believe that I did all the right things with the images. As soon as I became aware of what was in them, I followed the steps I felt were necessary to both protect myself and to see some kind of justice, if it was possible, be done to the people who did this stuff, but there was none to be had. Like I said, I went to the police and um, I'm gonna copy and paste um, an account of my interactions with the police about the snuff image. But I wrote in the description of one of my first testimonies about all of this, one of the first videos I posted on my channel, um, my testimony trafficked and programmed, I wrote an account in the description of this experience of how I was rejected by one of the cops. He refused to acknowledge what was in the picture he sat there bug-eyed, kind of staring at the ground while his partner asked me questions about the image. His female partner, who was probably tougher than him. And uh, then he kind of went ballistic and uh, went on about um, interrogating me about my mental health and what medications I was on and where I was seeing a shrink and then called mental health authorities on me. And nothing 
came of that outside of more MKUltra abuse for me at the time, which I don't want to go into, but I was not incarcerated in a psychiatric hospital or anything like that. I was already actually staying in a halfway house I had been accessed and programmed to go to. That was for people with mental health issues. That was after I had a breakdown after being accessed in a sober living home by someone I considered to be my friend who I have no contact with. I had to separate from her because she had been programmed. But um, this was someone who I don't consider to be culpable. She was just being used. She was a sweet person. Um, and uh, yeah, that still happened though. She was still used to access me and harm me. And I fought back, which resulted in an unfathomable panic attack that lasted over a day and required me to go to the hospital. I was afraid for my life. I was thrashing around on the ground, clawing at myself, trying to stop the panic. Trying to stop myself from screaming. Wonderful side effect of fighting back an MK Ultra reprogram. That can occur. Unfathomable terror. So after being in that hospital and being accessed, I was then sent to this halfway house. And while I was at the halfway house, I saw that I was about to become homeless and I got triggered and I decided that it was now or never. I was finally conscious of what was in the photographs. I had become conscious of it before, but was reprogrammed and was still not able to actually go to the police with them. Um, I didn't willingly or knowingly hang on to illegal materials without turning them over. I just, the programming made it impossible. But finally, because I'd fought back this reprogram in the SLE so hard and in the hospital so hard to rebuild myself, even though I was still accessed and programmed to go to this halfway house, I, um, I had had this huge breakthrough where I was finally able to responsibly deal with what was in the photographs. And if I'd been able to, I wish that I would have gone to a lawyer. And I wish that I would have actually done this the right way. In the moment, though, I was driven by emotion and driven by desperation, knowing that once I became homeless, I couldn't hold on to them. I couldn't hold on to the photographs. So my intention was to give them to the police and turn them over to them. They made a photocopy of the one image that I actually got a chance to show to them. And um, then gave me the pictures back which frightened me because I knew that it was major, major felonies in those albums, possessing that stuff. And I was terrified to be on the street in possession of child pornography, child sexual abuse images, I mean to say, and child snuff, even if those were of myself. I was terrified. And rightfully so. I'd had the mental health authorities called on me. I didn't know what they were going to do to me, what these people were going to do to me. So I threw the pictures away. My memory of doing so was out of body, dissociative. I'm still horrified by that. I still desperately want them back and I want to go to a lawyer with these pictures and actually prosecute my family. I know that without them though, I don't have much and I am too traumatized and too terrified to even call the county where I went to them with the pictures and uh, ask them if they still have a copy. I'm honestly too afraid that they're gonna tell me that they don't have it that I didn't even go there, that none of that happened. Not because it didn't happen, not because I would doubt that it happened, but because I'm just afraid of the erasure and the corruption that could very well have taken place. I'm also afraid of them saying it is there. And without the originals, I'm just afraid of all being hopeless, all being lost. I since went back um, and tried to find the child sexual abuse image on that website of myself. Not too long after I became aware of it, of what it was, back when I was 18, I think, still. And um, I couldn't find it and just searching for it made me sick. I only tried for a few minutes. My intention was to find the picture and um, turn it over to somebody in law enforcement. But I keep having to remind myself, despite the overwhelming guilt and terror of all of this and um, the so-called choices I made, that I was still under programming, still under duress. 
unfathomable fucking duress. And that I'm not responsible for any of this. I was three. In the pictures in the albums. Nine in the other. And then twelve or eleven online. And I was between the ages of eighteen and twenty when I was making all these decisions. And going through all the dissociation and the programming to keep me from actually reporting this stuff. And I just, I'm still torn apart by guilt. I'm just torn to fucking shreds by guilt. I wish that I could have done something. I wish that I still had them. I remember thinking I want to post this stuff online and and expose this um, to the world through the internet. I was like, I can't do that. They're fucking illegal, you know? And what, who would publish this stuff? It could only be done through a court of law. And, and what were they going to do? This is CIA. This is fucking CIA. And I'm ashamed of how I handled the interview with the police. I'm ashamed of it. I was so terrified. I was practically screaming my head off in terror, being there. My programming trying to sabotage me every moment. And I just... I said some things that I shouldn't have in the interview that undermined me and my credibility. Not that I'm not credible. It just... I said things in it that were fucking stupid, that were, I'm assuming, programmed. But no matter what I said, the images were real. And my story was credible. Anyone who knows ritual abuse, mind control, and child trafficking would have known that I was telling the truth. And that the things I said that would supposedly undermine my credibility were part of me having been programmed. But I'm, I'm still so angry at that cop. I've let go of a lot of it. But the male um, officer was, uh, no matter how traumatized he obviously was, or even possibly well-intentioned and just kind of a basket case, um, I am disgusted by, by his actions. It took me a long time to start to calm down about that. It's traumatizing. It's horribly traumatizing to be interrogated for coming forward for child abuse. To be treated like you're lying, 